I'm Andrew Patterson from interest.co.nz and welcome to another of our business success stories. Today we're joined by Mark Christensen, Managing Director at FaceMe. Mark, welcome to interest.co. Thank you very much. Good to be here. So Mark, tell us a bit about the business and uh, how it came about. Yeah, sure. Well, FaceMe is essentially a business product and what it does is it enables multi-party video conferencing as well as a whole suite of collaboration tools for, for businesses or organisations who, who need to talk to each other, who need to meet day to day, or for businesses who want to talk to their customers or suppliers outside of the organisation at any time uh, and, and really can talk to anybody because the most unique thing about our product is it's, it's developed to be used across the browser. So. We developed that after hearing from our customers in the IP telephony space who were using traditional video conferencing, that they were, they were frustrated. They, it was expensive for one. For a second, it was, um, they had to have the same hardware. So it was almost like a room to room experience. Well, it wasn't very open at all. So I either had to have the same hardware, or secondly, I have to have the same software as you to have a conversation over a video conference uh, product. So we thought, well, surely there's gotta be a better way. If I can make a phone call and it gets through and I can send an email, and it gets through, why can't I have a video call with somebody and I just know that it's going to get through? And this is something that hasn't been done before. So we decided that the only platform that across the globe that we all have access to is the browser. So therefore we designed the entire platform to be run over the browser. I don't have to download software. I don't have to have the same piece of hardware as you. We can be very, very open and narrow communication across our platform is about, let's talk with anybody. Let's not, you know, let's not restrict ourselves to having meetings just internally. You know, let's talk to our patients via this product, let's talk to our students, let's talk to our customers especially. We're really trying to get New Zealand businesses especially to talk with their customers both locally and nationally across FaceMe as a platform to grow their business, to build relationships. So this becomes a, a, a very personal experience rather than a, a sort of a remote experience as it is at the moment. Well this is the thing about, especially our country, is that we have this uh, you know, geographical need to be in touch with our customers and we can't do that all the time via, via airplanes or, uh, and, and it's not that great when you're just using your phone calls and emails, it's very impersonal. So we have a product, especially for New Zealand businesses, who can now collaborate and talk with in a very personal way with their, with their customers. So was there a eureka moment where somebody thought, wow, I can get a business model out of this? Yeah, there was. Actually, Danny Tomset, who's our founder of the parent company High Tech Solutions, uh, had a eureka moment when he was in a, in a customer meeting a number of years ago. And it really was about those restrictions across you know, the traditional landscape, landscape sorry, in, uh, in video conferencing. And, uh, and that's where the idea was born. And, and he came back and he's had a bit of a eureka moment overnight, actually. Came to work the next day, very excited, and went, the browser, you know, and that, and that was that. You know, it was the, what is the most uniform way we can, we can do this? And, and there we are, so. And what about the, the technology implications? Because, uh, I mean, it's one thing to come up with the idea. It's another thing, obviously, to make it happen. How complicated has it been to put this whole thing together? Yeah, look, it's been a two and a half year journey now. We, we, we think we're finally, in our latest version of our product, which is FaceMe 2.0, we we've got there. So we've got, a, we've got a very scalable product now so that we can now take this to the market uh, internationally. And uh, yes, it has been hard work to get the code and get the development right. Uh, but one of the best things about releasing a product early in our version 1.0 and 1.5 versions was we had a lot of customer validation and feedback. So we weren't afraid to put it out there. And so, and so we must you know, thank our, you know, our early adopters in New Zealand especially and across Australia who gave us a lot of feedback to get the code, to get the development uh, and get the end product, and especially in terms of that user interface and experience right. So uh, that's, that's been wonderful. How do you actually protect the technology and, and the IP that you've, you've created here? That's obviously an important aspect of the business. Yeah, we've done a good job of that, I think. You know, as much as you can, in the, in, especially in a global product uh, where we're looking to put it out as a SaaS product, or what we do right now as a SaaS product in terms of a monthly subscription service, users in, across the globe are going to see how we operate. Uh, and. Uh, you know, so you can only protect the actual interface and the way it works so much. In terms of the backing engine, we've absolutely got that loaded down behind very, very strong uh, IP protection security uh, hardware and software so that we can protect our IP. So who would you see as your major competitors at the moment? Well, there's, there's two really ends of the market. There is the, there is the pay-as-you-go um, and very low subscription model from the likes of Skype 
and Cisco WebEx. At the top end of the market, we still, what we believe, we still complement that market. So you've got your high-end meeting rooms and telepresence suppliers such as Polycom and Cisco and LifeSize. And so our technology actually integrates with theirs so we can bring in their meeting rooms into a face -beam meeting so that we can be, you know, we can actually do a lot more to customers, get a lot more in terms of flexibility and uh, they can now you know, start bringing in other parties to their meetings. So, yeah, we, so we, we, we're kind of, we see ourselves in, in the middle ground, but we can, we can certainly compete with Skype on feature set and uh, qu high quality video and more of a business grade product, a lot more collaboration tools, 12-way video, and at the top end, we see ourselves as complementary. Tell us about some of the customers that you're dealing with because uh, you obviously have a, a wide range of users for, for this particular application. Oh, well, yeah, customers are, this is the thing about a product, it's very wide. So we have government, we have uh, district health boards in New Zealand and Australia now who, who want to talk remotely with their patients. We have schools. We've got one particular school in Auckland, Takapuna Grammar, that are teaching English language to students in Korea and, and earning money through the use of FaceMe. Um, we have a lot of commercial organisations from KPMG to, to Vector to Toyota. So it's a, it's a real wide range of, of businesses. And right down to SME, we have a lot of, uh, now that we've launched our monthly subscription uh, model, we have businesses as small as three users in the Soho space now buying FaceMe for, um, for their business. So this really ticks the, the boxes, doesn't it, of, 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 a, of a New Zealand company that can really, you know, be making a difference. I mean, if you are, um, you know, having teachers teaching English into South Korea from New Zealand, that, that's pretty exciting potential, isn't it? Well, this is the thing about it is we, we're very excited and we, you know, we've just been overseas at, and the, at a couple of major trade shows and the, you can see the excitement in the reseller space, people who want to get a hold of our product and, and their marketplace to help us grow and scale. And, and the reason why is it's that width of uh, the, the marketplace with which we can enter. You know, it's not just a business product and it's because it can scale into government, local government, across into education. Health is probably one of the biggest verticals that we're excited about. You know, telemedicine uh, is, is huge and we're all across the western world we're looking at ways to improve and to be more efficient in healthcare and our healthcare spend and this is one of those tools that really does enable that so what about cost if, if i'm a, a sort of a small smallish sme business what, what am i looking at in terms of upfront cost to, to have the system in place sure so from a monthly subscription point of view now we we range from plans as low as 200 dollars a month right up to about a thousand dollars a month for the for the hiring corporate plans we also have an on-premise um, appliance or what we call a server and software on-premise we still have to have that in some cases some corporates require their technology to be, to be on their own premise because of security reasons or because they want more administration tools or maybe they want to have integration with the likes of Outlook. So there are times when we still will have that traditional model, and, but what we're seeing is a very big swing towards a cloud-based service rather than the on-premise device. Uh, but, but I'm sure there's still a place for on-premise for some time to come. So, so really any business could, could find an application for this potentially? Absolutely. I think that the thing about it is what we, what we really try and get across is that meetings, we, we try and provide everything that you'd normally have in a meeting. So when you're sitting around a table together, what do you have? You have access to, generally you have a whiteboard, you'll have access to spreadsheets, you'll have access to a PowerPoint presentation or a Word document and you're in the meeting, you're working on notes of the meeting. So we provide all that inside the FaceMe meeting, virtual meeting room. And the, our file support is second to none. So we have a content library and built into FaceMe, which makes it, it makes it very, very powerful. And you know, you name me a, a file type that you use in your, in your daily work and I'm, I can tell you that we uh, absolutely um, complement that. So the, not only is there a, a cost saving because you're not having to sort of fly people around the country, but obviously there's, there's greater productivity as well because, because the, the, the documentation can all be made available readily as well. That's right. We see customers now that instead of having uh, you know, three or four meetings in a day, they're achieving six to eight meetings in a day. So the efficiency is yeah, obviously there. And I think there always has been in, in video conferencing. It's always been seen as a, as a, as a cost saving tool. It's been seen as a, as a productivity tool. But where we're really trying to push the boundaries is to say this is actually potentially a selling tool. This is a relationship building tool outside of your business. And you know, we can't get that across enough that this, because it's now as, as simple as sending an email or as simple as you're making a phone call, and you can now connect in anybody across the globe into your meeting right now. And while you're at this particular phase, of course, it becomes a point of difference as well too. Yes, it does, absolutely. And when we see that, 
when we were at these trade shows across uh, Australia and Singapore last week, by far the biggest point of difference, and it's something we need to nail home for this next. Well, I think you know for the next couple of years we'll have this window, and it's important that we that we drive this as far as we can and scale it as fast as we can through that major point of difference. In terms of growth, companies like yours always face certain constraints, and I'm thinking staff are probably one of those. How have you dealt with the staffing issue? Yeah, staffing. There's there's two types of staff that you know this type of business needs. There's there's the developers, so the guys crunching the code. And at the moment, we're on another recruitment phase there to increase that. And you know, New Zealand, there's a there's some nice businesses out there doing well on the, on this international stage. If you look at Orion Health and and Zero, you know, that, these guys are gobbling up gobbling up a lot of these uh, developers. Uh, but uh, we've done well to date. We've uh, in the last three years in our business, we haven't had a single person resign. Uh, it's across 40 staff, so we've got a very good culture. So we know that when we get them um, on board, we know that they believe in our story, they believe in our growth potential. So now it's about you know uh, this next phase of recruitment. And the other the other type of uh, person we need, of course, is sales. I mean, we, you need to get in market, and you, through that you need channel managers and salespeople in market. And that's the two types of people we need. That's a great compliment to a business that it hasn't lost a single staff member in, in three years, uh, and and would suggest that obviously you're you're providing a, an environment that people are very happy to stay in. Yeah, we we we. We're adopting some of those things you, you see and hear from the Silicon Valley in terms of the, the, the style of the business, the workplace. You know, we've got the ta- we've got the, the gaming room and the table tennis, and we have you know flexible hours, and we and we, we bring all that in too. But it, it, you know, I think we are a unique, unique business, especially in Auckland, to have that kind of record, and it's and it speaks volumes for the type of people we bring on. We make sure that they are going to be complementary to our sort of reasonably family environment. How long we can continue that for as we as we grow very fast is is a thing that'll uh, that'll count. Uh, you won the um, BNZ Virgin Business Challenge um, last year, and uh, that gives you an opportunity to go and spend some time with Sir Richard Branson. What what are you planning on asking him during that time? Yeah, we're mostly not around the promotion or the marketing side. He's a bit of a genius in that in that, in that space. And you know, whilst he doesn't hasn't had a lot of B two B businesses across his portfolio, he's still a very very clever guy around the marketing side. And yeah, and you know, he's he's got a telco business too, so we we have some you know, potential relationship there. And uh, we're not sure how much effect our business might have on his airline over time, but we'll see how we go. Yeah, a, a, an order from uh, Virgin would be would be very nice for you right now, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's right. Maybe maybe using face me at thirty six thousand feet would be the greatest compliment, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mm. This is a company that's obviously growing rapidly. Tell us a little about your growth prospects in the future and uh, and how things are emerging at this particular point. Well, right now it's all about scale. So we're we're uh, setting up operations in Singapore and Canada. Uh, we're looking at the UK and the States next. So the natural, more mature markets. Uh, Capital is an issue, so you know we're, we're using all the retained earnings from our parent company. We're using all the retained earnings from our current uh, business model. But really, after being um, at some of these international trade shows, it's you start to see some of the size of these markets, and we have to get pretty serious about capital this next 12 months. Recently, went down to a IPO workshop down at the NZX uh, in Wellington, and uh, it's something that's certainly on our radar now. So, so this is great because you know, obviously, it's the sort of business that a lot of people would love to have a slice of. Yeah, I think so. I think you know, I think people are becoming aware of their growth story, and and that it, you know, it's not the traditional New Zealand dividend kind of uh, model. It's a this is a five ten year plan with maybe a likely large buyout down the track. So, you know, the, and this is a global business. This is something that can scale into every country and it can reach, you know, every type of organisation. So, you know, that excites people. And I think that uh, it's just something that's been in, obviously in the United States for a long time. Growth, growth stocks have been there. And I think that, uh, you know, the likes of Zero and Diligent have probably done a good job now of getting people to understand that there is real value in having that as part of someone's portfolio. And I'm certainly not saying that everybody should jump into growth stocks as, uh, you know, as their only uh, path into the NZX, but, uh, you know, it certainly should be part of the portfolio. And, uh, and there's going to be some greater interest this year, obviously, in the NZX again. Exciting, you know, with, with some of the sell down the SOEs and mixed ownership model at, at uh, Fonterra. So, you know, maybe the timing could be right next year. Do you find it curious, though, that um, that this technology is coming out of New Zealand when we would normally expect it to be coming out of, you know, Japan or South Korea or, or the United States? Yeah, I think there's, um, 
you could say we're bold. I mean, some people say to us, well, yeah, you know, what about Skype? I mean, uh, yeah, surely how do you compete against Skype, for example? And, um, well, it's a huge market, and you can. And as long as you're very business-focused and you, and you have a lot of business tools, you know, you can do it. And so, yeah, I think we're, I think we're bold, but we also, when you've got a market growing at over 20% year on year and predicted to do that for the next five years, you know, and we're talking about a $20 billion market per annum, so you don't need a lot to be very successful. Well, Mark, thank you very much for joining us. Um, great business and obviously one that uh, we'd like to perhaps see a, a listing of on the NZX in time to come. Yeah, thank you very much. No, it's been great to have you here and uh, we're, we're certainly looking forward to providing a, a great news story in the years to come.